Good morning. My name is Bridget Futrell. I'm the president and CEO of Erin Oak Kids. I have the good fortune of having that title and having worked at this organization for a very long time. Today uh, is a very, very special day, a momentous occasion. We are opening our, this is the grand opening of our Brampton, our third and largest site um, in terms of the sites that we have delivered for the community. And uh, I feel a little bit uh, a little bit excited that this is the last opening and a little bit sad that this is the last opening. I feel like, you know, I'm sending my last child off to university and um, afterwards there will just be bills to pay. <laughs> but no, we're going to have some amazing facilities that we're going to be sitting in for many, many a year to come. So I want to thank each and every one of you, uh, honored dignitaries, friends of Erin Oak Kids, our staff, our client families for joining us today to mark this occasion, this celebration. I'd like to begin by acknowledging some of this morning's attendees. Uh, a couple of them aren't here yet, but I'll note them and I hope they arrive through the fog. The Honourable Harinder Mali, Minister of the Status of Women and MPP for Brampton Springdale and MPP for Brampton West, Vic Dillon. From Infrastructure Ontario, Executive Vice President John McKendrick and Senior Manager Robert Price. From our Funding Ministry of Children and Youth Services, Deputy Minister Nancy Matthews. Assistant Deputy Minister of Business and Planning and Corporate Services, Drew Vanderdoom. Assistant Deputy Minister of Service Delivery, Nadia Cornaccia. Director of the Ontario Central Region, Karen Eisler, and Director of the Ontario Autism Program Project Team, Sarah Hardy. We have so many of our wonderful folks from the ministry here with us today. From the City of Brampton, Mayor Linda Jeffrey, and Councillors Jeff Bowman, Gail Miles, and John Sproveri. From the Town of Caledon, Mayor Alan Thompson, and Councillors Doug Beffert and Jennifer Innes. From Erin Oak Kids Board of Directors, our Board Chair, James Sutherland, and Directors, Nancy Anderson and Paul Kelly. We have, of course, the wonderful Erin Oak Kids Senior Leadership Team and our Management Team from the Brampton site, and our gracious donors. From the Giampaolo Foundation, Mike Giampaolo and Tito Giampaolo, Armand Sanguini and Todd Kerr. From the Longos Family Charitable Foundation, Carolyn Longo and Marie Aiulio. From Brannon Steele, Al, Linda, David, and Tom Brannon. From the Smile Zone Foundation, Kelsey Draw and Jackie Hames. And of course, the client families that we're all about who are with us here today. The Ash family, the Kahn family, the Gurpreet family, the Stoddart family, the Federal family, and the Duchange family. Thank you for joining us. Before we officially begin, I would just like to ask that for the next 45 minutes, everyone mute their phone. Please be aware that whatever you do today, you're on the record because we have photographers, videographers, and, um, and uh, other media folks who are capturing the images of the morning. We also encourage you to tweet and share photos of today's event on Twitter and, and Instagram. And I think we have a, um, a hashtag that you can use. So it's EOK Brampton Opening. Please go ahead and do that. And please don't forget to pick up your souvenir photo on your way out at the photo booth. If you haven't had your likeness taken yet, you may want to do so. There's also props that you can use to make it a fun photo. So you can pick them up or have them taken later and pick them up after you, when you leave later, later this morning or after lunch. And now it is my great pleasure to ask to the podium the chair of Erin Oak Kids Board of Directors, James Sutherland. Thank you, Bridget. Uh, good morning, honored guests and friends. We're glad to have you with us on this long-awaited celebration. As board chair, I've had the immense pleasure and privilege of helping steward this project to fruition. On behalf of the board and all the, and the, I want to thank the Government of Ontario for its vision 
and its investment in approving this project. I also want to acknowledge the leadership and unwavering commitment of our President and CEO, Bridget Futrell, in working each and every day to bring these buildings to a reality. She, the leadership team and staff of Aeronaut Kids have shown extraordinary fortitude in meeting this goal, and that goal has been singular, to better serve children and youth with disabilities in this community for now and for many years to come. This new facility and all that it offers to clients and families will set a new standard of excellence in the delivery of services for kids with disabilities. It is one of three new buildings, one here in Brampton, another in Halton, and the third in Mississauga, designed to bring therapy, medical and support, and recreational services together in a single location for children and youth with disabilities. With the addition of a 26-bed respite facility at this site, Erin Oak Kids now houses Ontario's largest respite center for children who are medically fragile, have complex care needs or behavioral challenges. This space will provide critically needed periods of relief for caregivers, as well as meaningful support and programming for client participants. As a collective, these buildings represent and exemplify all that Erin Oak Kids embodies. Bright, open, inviting and functional multi-use spaces offer hope, encouragement and optimize the potential for children and youth that we serve, also for their families and for our community. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I extend our deepest gratitude to all of the supporters on this journey whose destination we mark today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jamie. Upon beginning this journey many, many um, moons ago, we had no idea how long the road might be, what turns it might take, and why, when we might reach our ultimate destination. What we did have was an abiding passion and a singular vision, built upon that of the families who founded Aaron Oak Kids almost 50 years ago and all those who came after. Simply, it was to replace the outdated, undersized and inaccessible office spaces we inhabited with new, warm, welcoming facilities specifically designed to meet the needs of the children and youth with disabilities and special needs that we are so very privileged to serve. Spaces that would play to their strengths, take them to the edges of possibility and beyond and allow them to thrive, each in their own unique way. In short, we yearned for more, we wanted more, because we believed our kids deserved more. And that dream of tomorrow has become today's reality, thanks to so many. We could never have known at the beginning of the journey how much work it would entail, nor how rewarding the outcome. This morning we gather to mark the final, a, a final moment in time and a new beginning for Aaron Oak Kids for its 850 staff and 17,000 client families. We are proud and we are grateful to be unveiling the third of our three new state-of-the-art centers. This Brampton facility now provides a single point of care for families previously faced with the challenge of traveling to multiple locations for receipt of care for their children. For the first time, the children we serve have access to the broad array of therapy, medical, autism, and support services Erin Oak Kids provides, all under one roof, in new and augmented spaces designed to advance their learning, to, pr to promote their participation and independence, and to meet their family's goals. This fully integrated and expanded menu of services made possible only by these new facilities will change the trajectory and the future for our young charges and for the Brampton and Caledon communities in which they live and play. And one day in the not too distant future, we'll work and continue to contribute. And while we have lived in our new home for just a moment, the benefits accruing and the rewards being reaped are already highly evident. All one needs to do to be certain is to look around, to listen as parents gather in the resource center to trade thoughts and to network, as children and their therapists count together while climbing the feature stairs or bid farewell in the treehouse after a therapy session. 
and there are an abundance of smiles and goals met as children interact on the therapeutic playgrounds or gather at the truth windows to learn about the inner workings of a building and to explore their world. Place matters, and in this place, children and youth are building skills, participating, learning, building relationships, and acquiring hobbies and interests that will last them a lifetime. And that is the job of all children, to be and to grow, with the help of family and the support of communities surrounding them each and every day. That is what will happen here for thousands of children now and many, many more in the years to come. The nature and design of these buildings, the opportunities they afford and the connections they foster provide a place in which children and youth can and will maximize their abilities and define their own unique potential, as do we all in the fullness of time. We are so honored to be part of this legacy, to be connected to both the past and to the future, and to carry forward the work of the intrepid parents who established Arano Kids nearly 50 years ago. It will continue to evolve and grow in this beautiful new facility, thanks to so many. To our Government of Ontario, thank you for your leadership in making this investment in children and youth with disabilities in our communities. To our Ministry of Children and Youth Services, both capital and operating branches, for your unfailing support as we have moved through all phases of this project. To Minister Malley and MPP Dillon, thank you so much. To the City of Brampton, from whom we also purchased, at a very reasonable price, I might say, this beautiful parcel of land. And Mayor Linda Jeffrey, who was instrumental in bringing this project to fruition. To Mayor Alan Thompson for your ongoing support of our cause. To our generous donors who provided funding for all the specialized medical and therapy equipment you see in this building. And to the host of supporters we are proud to call friends of Aaron Oak Kids. We are deeply indebted to all of you. Together, we have laid the foundation for the coming chapters in the story that is Aaron Oak Kids. We know it is a bright one, filled with endless hope and possibility. And now, it is my distinct privilege to introduce Deputy Minister of Children and Youth Services, Nancy Matthews. Nancy Matthews was appointed Deputy Minister of Children and Youth Services in October of 2016. She began her public service at the Municipality of Metropolitan Toronto and City of Toronto, where she honed her expertise and leadership skills in human services planning and policy development, particularly related to the service of children, youth, and families. Since 2009, Nancy has been an Assistant Deputy Minister with the Ontario Government. She began her Ontario Public Service career in the Ministry of Children and Youth Services, Service Delivery Division. In 2013, she moved to the Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change as Assistant Deputy Minister of Operations. In October 2015, Nancy joined the Ministry of Education as Assistant Deputy Minister of the Early Years Division and served as Interim Deputy Minister of Education from June to October 2016. Nancy holds a Master of Science in Human Ecology from the University of Manitoba and attended the Ivy Senior Public Service Leadership Program. Please join me in welcoming Deputy Minister Matthews. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you, Bridget, for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, and thank you to uh, James uh, and the Board of Directors uh, and to all of the staff at the Erin Oak Center, uh, Erin Oak Kids Center for Treatment and Development for welcoming us, welcoming us here today. On behalf of the Ministry of Children and Youth Services, it's my pleasure and privilege to be here for the grand opening of the Brampton site. It's a real privilege to always be together with people who are so dedicated to supporting children and youth with special needs and to celebrate the opening of this very remarkable facility. I am very pleased, as, Brid as Bridget has noted, that now all three sites in Oakville, in Mississauga, and Brampton uh, are now open. 
With these three new facilities, which are more than double the size of the old space, children with special needs will be able to access vital services in their home communities in a more integrated manner. During my time with the ministry, I have heard from families about the importance of having services that are close to home, that are place-based, that are family-oriented and family-focused and responsive to the needs of their children, youth, and themselves as families. And the interest of this ministry has always been focused on supporting organizations to deliver important services to communities to meet those needs. These partnerships are so important to the ministry so that we continue to work together to find the solutions to connect children to the services they need as early as possible. Community partners such as Erin Oak Kids make this possible due to, the, due to the collaboration that they've demonstrated and the commitment to the communities that they support. Thank you, Erin Oak uh, Senior Management, to the Board of Directors, to the staff, and to the volunteers for providing our children with the help they need to participate fully at home, at school, in their communities. And congratulations very much on the opening of this site. Thank you. Here. Just checking to see who's here and who's not in terms of our next spot. Oh, wonderful. Great. I'm glad you got here. Okay. Thank you so very much, Deputy Minister, for your support and the support of the ministry every day and, of course, for all the wonderful funding that allowed us to build these three new facilities. I would now like to ask Minister Harinder, Harinder Mali to come to the podium. Minister Malley was first elected to the Ontario Legislature in 2014 as MPP for Brampton Springdale, and she also serves as Minister of the Status of Women. Previously, she was Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sports, and Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister Responsible for Women's Issues. Prior to joining the Legislature, Minister Malley served as a school board trustee for the Peel District School Board. She and her family have lived and worked in Brampton and have been active in the life of this community for the past 18 years. Minister Malley. Good morning, everyone. I am so pleased to be here with all of you today, and thank you for that introduction. Um, this is truly a special opportunity to be able to share in such a great, a great occasion, something coming from education. I could truly appreciate how many parents we got to see and speak to that take advantage of the services here at Erin Oaks and how wonderful it was for them to see the centre go up, to see how many people are going to be able to access the services they need closer to home where they need them. I, it's been, and we all know that it's been a long time coming, but we all also know that it takes a long time to achieve good things and we've finally done it. So I want to congratulate you, Bridget, and your entire team here today for taking the for putting in all that extra effort to make this dream come true for a number of families across our region. The challenge has been clear for more than 10 years that uh, we have a rapidly growing child population, especially in Peel and in Halton, and that made the need for Erin Oaks a lot greater. Along with this growing need and increasing demand, Erin Oaks was outgrowing their facilities. The one site in Mississauga that they owned was aging, and the need to rent additional space was not financially practical, nor was the space appropriate for the type of care that the clients needed. So a business case was submitted to the Ministry of Children and Youth Services in August of 2010 with a plan to build three new sites, one larger site in Brampton and two smaller sites in Mississauga and Oakville. And here we are today. I understand that the grant opening of the new Oakville site and the Mississauga sites were celebrated over the last few weeks, and today we get to complete the celebrations right here in Brampton. I want to commend all of you, including your partner agencies and your clients and their families for coming together to craft a plan for the future and then implementing that plan. The continued success of Erin Oaks as Ontario's largest child treatment centre is due to the tireless work that you have done. 
the continuing examination of services and opportunities for integration and partners addresses both the current as well as the emerging needs by providing the appropriate programs that allow children and youth to reach their full potential. Your leadership and innovation in the children's treatment centre sector has been second to none. And you should be proud of the role that you've played. Thank you for everything that you've done and congratulations. And before I get off the stage, I do want to offer sincere apologies on behalf of my colleague, Vic Dillon, who unfortunately could not be here today and asked me to send his very best to all of you. So thank you again for having us here today. Thank you, Minister Malley, for your support. Yes, it has been a few weeks of openings. I feel like it's been like a, a month-long party that we just are coming to the end of. What are we going to do next? We'll have to figure that out. Okay. Um, I would now like to, in one moment, call upon the Mayor of Brampton, Linda Jeffrey, to come to the podium. Elected Mayor of Brampton in 2014, Mayor Jeffrey has had a long-standing and outstanding career in community service. As a, a councillor for the City of Brampton for four consecutive terms from 1991 to 2003, she served and was then elected to the Ontario Legislative Assembly for three consecutive terms where she held a number of ministerial appointments. During her time as MPP for Brampton Springdale, Linda was an incredible driving force in garnering approval of Erin Oak Kids redevelopment project and we count her as one of our biggest supporters. I remember, I remember the day, Linda, that you came to our, our centre up on Sandalwood Parkway, it was rented space, and um, unrolled a big piece of paper and showed me where potentially we could be citing our new Brampton facility when we got approval, not if we got approval. And that was the beginning of something very, very big. Mayor Jeffrey has lived in, in Brampton since 1983 and is passionate about this city's development. She has been instrumental in moving forward a number of key initiatives for the city, including the investment of over $150 million to bring Ryerson University, Sheridan College and an innovation centre to the city of Brampton, a bid for a second headquarters for Amazon, one of only 20 to make the short list, the opening of a new Peel Memorial Centre, and as a long-time advocate for this project, the building of this very facility. I'm honoured to welcome our friend, Mayor Jeffrey. So good morning, everybody. This is a terrific day, and I'm really pleased to be here. And I'm joined by my council colleagues, Councillor Spovieri, the uh, regional councillor for the area, and Councillor Bowman. I don't know if Councillor Miles is here yet, but I heard her name. Today is the culmination of a lot of work of parents for their children in Brampton. I'm absolutely delighted to be here as we officially open the new site for Erin Oak Kids. Personally, this day is very special to me. When I, when I was an MPP, I remember that day, Bridget, on Sandwood Parkway, and we talked about our dreams for having a, a great, modern, accessible site for kids. And as I recall you telling me, you had multiple sites and they were not in the best condition. And although the services were great, because the staff always did an exemplary job, the place they were trying to deliver those service in were not optimal for their families and their children. And we began plotting about how we could consolidate those many different locations into a central location that would better serve the needs of patients in Brampton. At the time, I had just seen the blueprints for the future of Peel Memorial, and I was thinking maybe there's a chance to co-locate and maybe they could be part of or adjacent to the site. In the end, the plan wasn't feasible, but ultimately you achieved the best solution for our city and for our future uh, young people. When I was an MPP at Queen's Park, I had three major priorities. To me, Brampton Civic, a new Pill Memorial site, and Erin Oak Kids were central to making sure families and children had the services that they needed close to home. Because in the past, we used to have to travel to Toronto or outside our community to get those services. This facility in Brampton, which also hosts the first 26-bed respite 
Centre in Ontario is the largest, yay Brampton, of all the three sites, and the need for service is only going to grow because in Brampton and Caledon, that rate is growing by 15% annually. When your child is young and you learn that they aren't progressing like other children, you as a parent can sometimes become overwhelmed. So to have a resource like this staffed with people who are well-trained, passionate, and in a state-of-the-art facility with a climbing wall, all in your own city, your experience is made that much easier. Parents who re receive and their kids who receive treatment and advice here at Erin Oak tell me how grateful they are for the services they get. They're grateful that they can go somewhere close to home where their kids feel safe, loved, and receive the attention that they deserve. Their children are happy when they're here and they leave feeling confident that their strengths and their abilities are being pushed to their, their maximum ability. Erin Oak Kids has grown to become Ontario's largest treatment centre. All the children with disabilities who live in our communities are touched by their services at Erin Oak Kids and this centre is one-stop shopping for families but it isn't a place you visit once. Regular visits are part of making sure children progress and the staff here become part of your family and your children's lives. As an elected official, you can work for years on a project, but it's rare that you get to see it to completion. I am so very pleased to be here. I'm grateful to the province of Ontario for approving and funding this beautiful facility in Brampton. Congratulations to everyone, to all the donors and all the individuals who have been part of this success story. I'm glad to have helped you get over the finish line. I can't wait to take a tour of the full facility. Thank you and congratulations. So, so on behalf of my council and I, could I ask my council uh, that are here, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Spobieri, we just have a little certificate that we give to all of our new businesses. Uh -huh. And you're kind of, come over here, you're kind of a new business. Okay, oh, we're going over here. Just sure. Come on, you go ahead. You go close. Hey, there we go. This is perfect. Thank you, Linda Jeffrey. We could not have done this without you. We are, as I said, forever in your debt. And any time you want to take a turn on the climbing wall, I'm in. Okay. Now, please join me in welcoming to the podium Town of Callendon Mayor, Alan Thompson. First elected to Municipal Council in the fall of 2003 as the Area Councillor for Ward 2, and subsequently elected to Regional Council in 20, 2006, Mayor Thompson is a lifelong resident of the town of Caledon. He was elected as mayor in 2014, and he and his spouse, Anne, are raising their children on their family farm. Mayor Thompson maintains an active committee schedule at both the town of Caledon and region of Peel, and is a leading member of a number of local community organizations. We are most fortunate in that he has been an ambassador for our capital fundraising campaign and a big supporter of Erin Oak Kids. Please welcome Town of Caledon Mayor Alan Thompson. Good morning. And I got to tell you, it is really great to be here. And I'm also here with Councillor Befford, and I do know. Councillor Innes does have a, a, a TRCA meeting, but she is going to come here uh, later when she's available. I, I was fortunate to uh, have a tour of this site uh, for, for the purpose of fundraising here earlier on. And I can tell you I was extremely impressed. In fact, I was blown away. You know, you hear about it, you see the pictures, but I'll tell you, walking the hallways, seeing what's taking place here, uh, was really mind-boggling but very, very impressive. And I could see then that this is a second place for families and for the kids. And I think that's what it's all about. And a place where kids that with disabilities and challenges can learn their independence and grow to their full potential 
and it takes a facility like this to make that happen. And I have to tell you, yes, it's in Brampton and I'm from Caledon, it doesn't matter, we're all part of the region appeal and the surrounding areas. You're in Oaks, doesn't look at boundaries. You're the children with disabilities and we shouldn't look at it there. So how do we all work together? And I think this is a perfect site to serve the community that uh, they're about to do. And I'm going to tell you, um, look at the state of the art, a uh, lot of creative thinking, and thinking through their lens. Congratulations to all the planners and developers that made this happen. And I will also say thank you to Mayor Jeffrey and all the roles that she had to help make this a reality. I want to thank the, the region, I mean, the region appeal I know is a big part of it, but also the province of Ontario to come up with the funding. And now we know we all have work to do to make sure that we do get the advocate funding going forward to continue to serve our community as we see. So thank you very much. But I also have a certificate I want to present to both uh, Bridget and James. And Councillor Beffer, will you come up with me, please, and help make this presentation? And this is congratulations on the official opening on this state of the, this art facility, state of the art facility, sorry, that will serve the children and youth with physical and development disabilities for autism and communication disorders. Thank you for collaborating and being connected with the communities you serve. Thank you so much. We'll Thank probably you. go over here. Yeah. And Just a little bit. <laughs> 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 that was the stage, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Thompson. And we're hoping that you're going to stay on our fundraising team, even in, though we've already met our, our goal for capital fundraising. There's always more to do to fill these beautiful spaces with new programs and services. And I would ask and would suggest, highly suggest, that each of you who are able take the tour after, um, after we finish here this morning because these are beautiful facilities. And from our point of view, they do not belong to Erin Oak Kids. They belong to our community. We are merely the momentary stewards of these buildings. And we want to ensure that we collaborate well with all of our partners in the community to share these spaces where we are able and to build an, uh, relationships and connections for all the folks who live in Brampton, Caledon, and beyond. It's been a long journey, and I also want to acknowledge that our previous CEO, Linda Rothney, is here today with us. Thanks for joining us again, Linda. Um, we have, because it, it has been a long, long time coming, we have encapsulated um, our, our, the, the journey of the last 10 years in what is now a five minute video. So strap on your belts and uh, we're going to dim the lights and I would ask you to turn your attention to our screens to watch the uh, last 10 years in very fast order. It seems hard to believe, a little bit surreal in fact, that we are actually here. And this has been a journey of 10 years. We did a lot of advocating at Queen's Park. We had asked for three sites. So when we were approved for three sites and for our wonderful 26-bed respite facilities, it was a very poignant moment. In May 2011, to much fanfare, we were announced as the biggest redevelopment project in the history of Ministry of Children and Youth Services. Next came the fun of finding and buying our new sites. And in 2015, we broke ground on all three sites. It's real, finally. We will open new doors to empower the children we serve to pursue their dreams for the next 40 years and beyond. These three new buildings exemplify everything that Erin Oak Kids stands for. They are going to set an example for how children with disabilities will be treated. This is an idea that's taken from a concept shown on a set of drawings that resulted in the fabulous buildings that we have now. We purposely designed all three buildings to be very similar.
As the buildings were being designed and built, we were also redesigning and reorganizing ourselves so that once we both came together and we actually moved in, our staff would be comfortable, they'd be prepared and trained and ready to hit the ground running and start delivering services to clients and families. These buildings are going to be bigger than anything we're used to. These buildings are going to have technology that we don't have right now. These buildings are going to bring teams together that have never been brought together before. So all of that required us to really take a high-level view of how we organized ourselves and how we worked together. Welcome you all to our first speech meeting on site. No more community centers, gyms, libraries. I hope everyone's been settling into your new sites, your new desks, exploring the toys. The most meaningful moment of this project was driving up to the new sites on the first day of service delivery to clients and families, seeing our beautiful buildings, seeing the Aeronaut kids flag waving, and welcoming our little clients and their families. Being there as those very first clients walked through the door, being able to watch them as they interacted with the space. Ezra walks in and he's all over the map, checking out all the cool doors and hallways. He sees this fireplace, which is like like the coolest thing to him. These little details that were incorporated into the building and into the design instantly became part of the experience of Aaron Oak Kids. The truth windows, there were three children in a row with their faces just glued to the window watching the elevator gears. He runs through the doors, I can't keep up with him in the parking lot. It's bigger and it's better. It is so open, it is so bright. This building is full of hope. All the windows and the light and the colors just speak to that. Iron Oak Kids is finally in buildings that represent the amazing work that gets done here at Iron Oak Kids. These buildings are a game changer. There's greater opportunity for interprofessional when we all get to work alongside of each other. I can just hop over to somebody's desk and quickly get some professional development in a short period of time. So there's more opportunities for collaboration. I think it's important for parents to be able to come to a single site for all the services that they need for their children. It has all the facilities that the kids need, the gyms, the washrooms. There are things that I can do here that I could never do at my site before. Our ADL kitchen, our playgrounds, our gym. There's just so many more services that we can do now that we couldn't do before. They've made the site fun. So it's not just a place to come for therapy, but it's a fun place that family members want to go to and spend time. We have all the toys and tools that we need in these bright, beautiful spaces. Kids are really happy to come back again and again. I like it because it's fun and it's where I get to see my friends I don't get to see every single day. It's the biggest respite facility in the province and it's the only respite facility that will allow us to serve children who are otherwise hard to serve and whose families never get a break. So children who are medically complex and children who are behaviorally complex. It's kind of like where I grew up, basically, like home to me. Every kid wants to go to this place because they feel like oh, it's happy. I don't know what I would have done without Aaron Oak Kids. Buildings and things are shiny for a second, but a relationship is always shiny. It's the people. The biggest impact Aaron Oak Kids is having on our lives, Ezra's lives, is giving us the tools to better his life. He was never supposed to have function below the waist. He was never supposed to stand. He was never supposed to crawl. He was never supposed to ride a bike. We bring about change here. We bring about hope here. There are things that our clients do here that they've never done for their families before. I've heard first words. I've been there for first steps. And those type of miracles get to happen here. And that is absolutely amazing. These buildings could not have come to fruition without the assistance of many. To the Government of Ontario, our funding Ministry of Children and Youth Services, our local MPPs and generous donors, thank you so very much. These new facilities will stand for decades as a legacy to your vision and your support. I'm going to watch that video when I'm in the home. <laughs> okay. Um, now, for what we're all about, it is my great pleasure to invite to the stage an Aaron Oak Kids family, the Ash family. 
Erin and her sons Nolan and Brendan and daughter Aislinn are going to come up and talk to you a little bit about their journey and their journey with Erin Oak Kids. We brought Jack and Alfie too, just as a tribute to the hard work and construction that went on here. Brendan completely buys in for that. So uh, this is Aislinn, Nolan, and Brendan. Um, so I haven't done this before, so uh, hopefully I do justice to the people that I want to speak about today. Um, on a beautiful sunny day in June of 2007, I became a mom for the third time. I had the sweetest five-year-old little boy, Nolan and a firecracker of a little girl, Aislinn, who was just 19 months old when our family grew to welcome Pickle, as we called him, until he got a name into our family. Uh, third time mom, and I thought I knew it all. Little did I know life had other plans. Brendan Keegan Ash was born on the summer solstice, and my Irish Catholic father was convinced he was going to be magical, if only he knew just how much. Brendan was the perfect baby, almost too perfect, and by about eight weeks, I started to realize something wasn't right. So I started to ask questions, which only led to more questions, and doctors who listened and looked, and tests and procedures, and potential diagnoses with names like lipofusinosis, doors that opened, and I thank God every day that closed again. And all the while, my little boy grew further behind, and an eventual diagnosis of global developmental delay brought us to Aaron Oak Kids when Aaron, Brendan was 18 months old. Here we met people like Catherine, his first speech therapist, who gave Brendan words and language, who would have known it was a start for a little boy who now talks from sun up to sundown and sometimes longer. We met the wonderful OT Paula, who helped in helping Brendan learn to navigate the world, also helped me to see the beauty in all my son was and could do and not see all that he wasn't. Brendan took his first independent steps at three years old and Paula helped us work with the city planners to develop our neighborhood playground and make it more accessible for Brendan to allow him to just be a little boy who wanted to go to the park. We met Kathy, who sent the kind-hearted Parminder to accompany Brendan so he could attend the same nursery school his brother and sister had, and I could secretly pretend that it was going to be okay and he would catch up. But delay turned to disability and we had new medical issues added like seizures. Brendan struggled with how to navigate the world as his body grew but his mind didn't follow at the same pace. And we had behaviors, scratching and pinching and biting and screaming. We added the word autism to the list of things that helped explain who Brendan was. And meanwhile, life around us kept moving. I had a job and a marriage and two other children who were desperate for their mom, yet never once complained about waiting or missing out, as more and more our lives were defined in terms of what, Brendan, what worked for Brendan, what he was physically able to do, what he could manage without meltdowns and behaviors. And all the dreams I had about li what life would be slowly started to change too. I was a sad and tired mom, surrounded by people living the life I thought I was supposed to have. And then the time came for me to face my reality that I needed help and I desperately needed a break from my own child. It's a heart-wrenching feeling to acknowledge that and say that out loud. And I know many parents who should, but they don't. How do you acknowledge it? And then hand your most vulnerable child to someone else and trust enough to walk away and allow yourself that time. You can do it when it's Aaron Oak Kids. When you have people like Karen Jacksite who has the patience to listen to a crazy neurotic mom and her insane bedtime routine in detail so they could do their best to replicate it. Brendan came to Aaron Oak Kids respite in the summer of 2013. There was nothing more in the community that could support him with all his needs. There was no place where Brendan could just be Brendan until Aaron Oak Kids Camp. They made sure he had the support he needed to be successful, but also for us to be successful and have the break we all so desperately needed. There really are no words to properly explain the gift that respite is. The gift of peace of mind for having somewhere your child can go without apologizing for behaviors, without justifications and explanations. Somewhere he's not only accepted for who he is, but celebrated for the funny, sweet, silly little boy that he is. Here in this place, in this awesome, beautiful new building, Brendan is surrounded by love, and that means more than you will ever know. 
The staff that support him here have my adoration, my respect, but above all, they have my gratitude. Erica, Jade, Jeremy, Natalie, John, JP, so many more, I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Erin Oak Kids Respite has allowed me to be a better mom. It has allowed me to step away and give my other children what they need to and recharge my battery so I can come back and do it all over again because my son needs me. We have used respite for something as simple as a dinner out or a quiet walk in nature, canoeing in Rockwood or adventures like tubing down the Alora Gorge or fishing out on Lake Erie, sleeping under the stars in a tent on a sandy beach. I have used respite to take my other children to Disney and to Ireland to get to meet their great granny before she passed away and to go to their first ever all-inclusive resort in the Caribbean. It is so hard to leave someone behind. It is so hard to say that we need these things without Brendan, but our reality is that we do. They do not hold any value for him. But camp does. Aaron Oak Camp does. And Brendan goes to camp and has experiences that are meaningful to him so we can have experiences that are meaningful to us and make memories to carry us through the times that sometimes are maybe not so easy. Brendan is a delight and a joy. He is a happy boy with a devilish grin who can exasperate you and melt your heart at the same time. He loves diggers and shoes and Thomas the Train. He loves to swim and to play silly and talk about getting into trouble. But he is always on. There is no adult time in my world or take a break or give me five minutes. He doesn't understand how to wait or know how to play independently. So he comes to camp so someone else can tie his shoes 500 times and talk about Jack the Digger and whether he'll be working today or not and sing a song about just about anything you could possibly imagine. For a little while, I don't have to, and my other children don't have to, and we can all come back again, ready to start, recharged and renewed. Brendan makes the world a better place for all those blessed enough to know him. He is so loved by his brother and sister and so blessed to have them. Brendan teaches us all that sometimes life is really just about the simple things. He lives in the moment without hate or prejudice or fear, and he loves wholeheartedly. And isn't that really what the world needs more of? Please, to everyone who made this happen, please don't stop. Please continue to recognize the importance of this place, to fund, to support this place, and the staff that make it what it is. It is our lifeline, it is my sanity, and it is a gift to my family and all the other families like us. And on our behalf, we thank everyone who made this place, Erin Oak Kids and Erin Oak Kids Respite, possible. Thank you. I think I need a Kleenex too. <laughs> no, I'm okay. But thank you so much to the Ash family. Um, hearing the impact that our new spaces are having on families like yours has made this journey even more special to all of us at Erin Oak Kids. Of course, a huge part of bringing this project to fruition were our incredible donors. So again, I would like to thank the Longos Family Charitable Foundation for its generous donation to our organization. We could not be more thankful than for the Longos Family Resource Centers at all three of our sites. As well, I'd like to thank the FDC Foundation for its commitment to Erin Oak Kids. The FDC Foundation has been a supporter of the organization since 2014, and we are thrilled that our medical suites at all three sites will be named in their honor. Yeah, FDC, for Danny. I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize the Giampaolo Foundation for its most remarkable donation to Aaron Oak Kids. The Giampaolo Foundation, the philanthrop philanthropic arm of the Giampaolo Group, has made a magnanimous pledge of two and a half million dollars to Aaron Oak Kids in My Dreams campaign in support of this facility. To date, they've fulfilled 750,000 of that amount. The foundation's gift represents one of the largest gifts ever in the history of Aaron Oak Kids and it will help fund vital services and supports that would not otherwise be possible without this kind of contribution. The found thank you. The foundation, the, 
foundation is focused on assisting communities in which the Giampaolo group operates. Now I get to tell your whole life history, you ready? The group was started over 40 years ago in metal recycling by Mike Giampaolo when he arrived in Canada with less than $50 in his pocket. His brother joined him shortly after and they have grown Triple M Metal into the largest privately held scrap business in North America. The group has grown to over 2,000 employees in a number of areas including metal recycling, manufacturing, distribution and electronics refurbishment throughout North America, along with a significant real estate company. Uh, as the group continues to expand, the GM Paolo Foundation will continue to serve as the platform for the group to give back. We wish you every success in this important work that you do. In recognition of this most generous, generous gift, Erin Oak Kids Brampton site will carry the name, the GM Paolo Foundation Clinical Site. And there it is. I'm sorry you couldn't see it this morning because of the fog. But thank you again to the GM Paolo Foundation. I'd also like to recognize another significant donor with us today that made respite a possibility here at our Brampton site, Brandon Steele. Family owned and operated since 1968, Brandon Steel is one of North America's premier suppliers of carbon steel parts to print. Under the leadership of Tom Brannon, the company began with only six employees. Did you have 50 bucks or more? Okay, anyway, Tom left his job, sold his house, and moved the family into an apartment to set up a 2,000 square foot shop in Etobicoke to provide oxy-fuel cutting services. His son, Al Brannon, who was in grade 13 at that time, began working at the company in the evenings and later joined full-time while taking night courses to complete his education. Wow. As the years passed, the company grew, moved to Brampton, and you may have seen it along the 410, and by 1980 added a second plant to its operations under the leadership of Al Brannon. Today, Brannon Steel, now run by Al's sons, Tom and David, is an industry leader working with some of the best known manufacturers of off-road construction, railroad, agricultural, and materials handling equipment in the world. I think we had a couple of those <laughs> machines up here. Their commitment to the community is remarkable, and we are proud to announce today that the Aspen Lodge, one of the two wings within our new 26-bed respite facility, will bear the name the Brannon Family Aspen Lodge. Al. <laughs> Yeah. Al, David, Linda, and Tom, thank you for this tremendous gift. Our state-of-the-art regional respite center provides parents of children with complex care needs uh, a much-needed break, as you've heard from the Ash family, from their caregiving routines while their children are nurtured outside of their homes. This is a cause that is very close to the heart of Brannon's as their daughter attended our old respite facility, so they understand firsthand the critical need of respite services for families. On behalf of Erin Oak Kids and our board of directors, our sincere thanks to all of our tremendous major donors for their contribution to Erin Oak Kids. I would now like to invite all the speakers from today to join us on stage for the ribbon cutting ceremonies. Thank you. I got a mic now. It's exciting to know that this new space will facilitate the growth and development of the next generations of children and youth with disabilities in Brampton. On behalf of myself, the entire board of directors, and all the people that have worked so hard at Aeronaut Kids and our supporters, 
I'd like to thank you all for joining us today to celebrate this extraordinary moment. Now finally, I'd like to invite our clients and families to join our dignitaries, myself and our CEO, for cake cutting and eating and photos. All guests are then invited for lunch at 11.15 in our learning center. Please look for volunteers outside the gym for assistance in locating this area. And for those of you who'd like a tour of the facility, uh, please make your way to one of the staff members at the back of the room holding a tour sign. I'd also like to remind you, as Bridget did, to pick up your photo before you leave today. Once again, thank you all for coming and thank you for your support. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you. Thank you.